Close to today, the autumnal equinox ushers in a new season and a time of harvest festivals when people give thanks for abundant crops. Fun fact, in Middle English before the 1300s, the word harvest was the word for this season, autumn being a word later borrowed from French. In many Asian cultures, people also gather at this time to celebrate family unity and honor ancestors with special food. Can you think of a celebration that doesn't have food? Even funerals have funeral bread. Perhaps one of the first harvest celebrations of a sort is described in the story from Exodus, when the hungry Israelites, as they'll return to the Garden of Eden, discover a food with a miraculous property just waiting for them to collect. For those of you who like math, here's a question. If every member of the camp gathered a portion of manna per person for their tent, how much manna did the Hebrews together all to, uh, gather altogether? The answer? Enough. This really is the miracle of the manna, not that food suddenly appeared on the ground, but that there was enough for everyone. Those who gathered little found they had enough. Those who gathered more than they needed had nothing left over. They all had what they needed to support life. Enough is a word that you cannot take in if you lack food security. It takes huge trust in God and Moses on the part of the Israelites to abide by the rule to gather just what is needed. Strangely, in our modern economy of plenty and constant growth, it's a word we North Americans scarcely recognize. The lesson doesn't seem to last for the Israelites either, but for this moment, the Israelites demonstrate that they trust that God will sustain them enough to satisfy their needs and permit them to observe Sabbath with nothing extra to burden them on the journey. After escaping Egypt with their lives and despite disobedience, here is another rich opportunity to discover abundance in God's loving and forgiving care. How they must have celebrated over this miraculous food. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them, says Jesus. And very often so is the coffee or teapot and a snack. In our search for connection to one and another and God, what could be better than sharing a meal? Everyone needs sustenance, no matter the form of delivery. The act of sharing food has the power to bring together vastly diverse people, as all our senses, whether taste, smell, hearing, sight, or touch, are open to one another at the table, where the Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. As part of seminary training, I volunteered every Saturday for nine months at Friendship Inn, a drop-in center in downtown Saskatoon, where people are served a free meal twice a day. The food or money to purchase it is donated by local businesses, charitable organizations, and individuals. Everyone who comes through the door is welcome to partake of the nourishing soups, sandwiches, fresh or canned fruit, and vegetables, cookies, and other treats. On rare occasions, there's even pizza. Although it sounds like a soup kitchen, the inn's primary purpose is not feeding. It is gathering community. Week after week, youth, middle-aged, and elderly alike come together, talking about their lives and helping one another solve such problems as finding an apartment or filling out government forms. Young men newly released from prison find a mentor in one of the employees who works with a support group for anyone wanting to make a positive change in their lives. 
Over a hot meal, people with few material resources to spare create community through giving and receiving expertise, friendship, wisdom, and encouragement. Friendship in and other places like it across the country demonstrate that there is enough to go around and that more than mere nutrition is gained by sharing food. When the disciples return from their first mission trip, all they want, as Miriam Spies pointed out in her sermon at General Council 43, is a break. But when they try to send the hungry people away to forage on their own, Jesus insists, you give them something to eat. They should have learned something on their travels about creating community and discovering abundance. When the disciples begin by looking at what they do have, rather than what they lack, they discover that there is more than enough. For twelve baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish are returned. Where with our fractured hearts and minds we perceive only scarcity, there is always more than enough. When we answer the call to be church together, we discover that, surprise, we are not alone, and we have more than enough to offer. Your spiritual homework this week is to practice eating and drinking in God's name. Opening your awareness to the abundance of God's love in the food that you enjoy and perhaps share with others. Imagine what our world would be like if everyone had enough. Amen.